What is going on, everybody? It is Troop from Troop Talks here, here for another episode of Troop Talks. Job Wars going a little bit retro for that intro. So, ladies and gentlemen, this year the Jacksonville Job Wars have 21 listed free agents, but only really eight of those free agents matter, at least in my eyes. And in my opinion, I think we split the free agents we have. So, here are four free agents the Job Wars will keep on its roster, and four free agents that are going to walk away from the Jacksonville Jaguar. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into the video. Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, Tree, if there's 21 free agents, there has to be better than eight guys to talk about. There really isn't. Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at how many people the Job Wars signed off the street just this season alone, there really isn't that many notable names that the Job Wars are going to be bringing back or letting go. You know, guys like Blake Bell, Corey Robinson, you know, those guys. We're not going to talk about those guys. We're going to talk about guys that have been in games and that have been on this team for quite some time. And first and foremost, we're going to talk about free agents that the Job Wars should keep, which it seems like a commodity right now because there's a lot of people that don't think the job wars really bring anybody back that's why a lot of people think that the job war should really be considering something at the tight end position however i think the front office is thinking differently and thinking they have two solid tight ends in austin safarian jenkins and james o'shaughnessy and both of those guys happen to be free agents and both of those guys are guys that i think the job wars are going to bring back on the team asj never got a fair shout by the job wars um, last year due to injury. I think this guy has potential to be a really, really solid player. I don't think there's any way the Jaguars let him go. I think they bring him back um, at least for another season to really prove what he's worth. Uh, sign him to improve a deal if you have to. I'd honestly even sign him for three years. I have a lot of faith in this guy. I think the uh, the amount of upside from Austin Safarian Jenkins is tremendous. You know, I've been high on the guy ever since he's played for Tampa Bay back in 2014-ish. You know, I really think this guy has potential to be a top tight end in the NFL, and I think that Jaguar fans need to take a big step back and really think about what they have right now. If the Jaguars wanted a tight end, they should have drafted one in last year's class because it was deep and stacked with tight end talent as opposed to this year. It's a little bit slimmer than it was last year. So I think they should stick with what they got in Austin Safarian Jenkins as a starter. If he gets injured again, then yeah, by all means, move on, get somebody new. But I think they should stick with uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins for one more year. And the same thing goes with James O'Shaughnessy. I think the James O'Shaughnessy thing is more of a coach's thing. I think the coaches really like James O'Shaughnessy. I mean, they've shown it year in and year out. The guy gets a decent, a, a, a decent to a lot of playing time. And, you know, when cuts came last year, you know, there's reports saying James O'Shaughnessy is going to make the roster over Ben Koyak. And I thought that was ridiculous. I thought that was ludicrous. But, obviously, the coach seen something in O'Shaughnessy that he didn't see in Koyak. Kept O'Shaughnessy on the roster. Now, obviously, the Jaguars went and signed Koyak later on in the season um, when he was a free agent. You know, no one really picked him up. And uh, we needed him due to some injuries at the tight end position. But I think the Job Wars are more than content with keeping uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins and James O'Shaughnessy in their tight end room and being their two tight ends. And they're going to be cheap guys to sign back. So I really don't think uh, these two are going anywhere. I expect them to be uh, Jacksonville Job Wars heading into the 2019 season. Now, as for the other uh, three guys that I think the Job Wars are going to bring back, this one may shock a lot of people, but I'm going to go with running back Corey Grant. I think Corey Grant has been an electrifying offensive weapon for this team for a really, really long time. And, um, you know, what he did in the AFC Championship game against the New England Patriots in 2017 cannot be preached enough on how much that meant to the Job Wars as a squad. And I think, you know, just the offensive weaponness of this guy and, you know, what he's done for the Job Wars since he's came in, you know, just being really under the radar, really exciting to watch and a fun running back uh, all in his own right. I think the Job Wars give this guy another chance. Also because there's another running back that's going to be a free agent by the name of TJ Yeldon, who, spoiler alert, don't really think the Job Wars are going to bring back. Um, and, you know, you got Fournette, you got Rawls now. Um, and, you know, people are thinking about drafting a running back. 
But I think the smarter move, I think they should still draft a running back, but give that running back some competition in training camp. Let's sign Corey Grant back. I think that this guy is tremendous on special teams. I think he could help out in that aspect. And um, he's terrific in the run game because, you know, you never know what you're going to get with him. You never know if you're going to get a run with him or if he's going to go out in the backfield and catch the ball. This is a dark horse pick. I would not be surprised if the Jaguars didn't decide to sign Corey Grant back. And I also wouldn't be surprised if Corey Grant went out to another team and balled the complete F out. Um, But I think as for what I would do if I was the Jaguars, I'd bring Corey Grant back. I think that he brings good competition to the running backs. And I think that uh, the... Running backs that the Jaguars will have next season. I think the Jags might even fuck around and cut Carlos Hyde. I think if they cut Carlos Hyde, I think that also opens the door for uh, Corey Grant to return to this team. Because as of right now, we still got him, Williams, Hyde. I mean him. We got Hyde, Williams, um, Rawls, and Fournette. And, you know, if we could bring Corey Grant back, that's five backs. And then, you know, we draft a guy that's six backs. So Corey Grant can more than likely be cut uh, by the time, you know, the off season's over, but like I said, it's a dark horse pick. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's more me just saying, man, don't let my boy Corey Grant go. Y'all already let my boy Dante Fowler go. You know, don't let my boy Corey Grant go. Um, Corey Grant, like I said, is a little. It's just a little bit more wishful thinking than anything. I, I would not be surprised if the Jaguars didn't end up bringing back Corey Grant. Let's just put it that way. Now another young man that I think has proved himself a million times over, and I think is a great backup corner to Jalen, AJ, and DJ Hayden is Tyler Patman. I think he's going to get the Jared Wilson treatment. I think uh, with how hard he's worked and filling in that role and filling in that spot before him himself uh, got injured, I think that he's going to earn himself a contract, a little bit of an extension to stay on the team and make sure that he can be key depth and also be a key special teams contributor. Um, I mean, throughout training camp and the offseason, you know, a lot of people were talking about Tyler Patman and how he might start over DJ Hayden at the nickel corner position. The guy got a lot of playing time, didn't really let a lot of things happen. You know, he was playing good football as a cornerback. And I think that Tyler Patman's going to stick around next year. And I think the job wars end up bringing him back. And now just a fair warning for y'all, if you take my words to heart, last year I was wrong on every single free agent that we brought back. So... You know, my word could basically also just mean absolutely nothing. This is just why I think the Jaguars are thinking. We obviously don't actually know what our favorite team is thinking. And the final guy that the Jaguars will keep heading into the 2019 season is Rashad Green. Because do you really think the Jaguars are just going to let Rashad Green walk? Think about it. Now let's talk about five Jaguars that unfortunately will probably be probably be leaving us for the 2019 season starting things off with Dante Moncrief one of the most idiotic deals the job wars have ever done signing Dante Moncrief Dante Moncrief a guy who's never had a thousand yard season a 10 million dollar contract to a prove it deal and guess what he didn't really prove anything uh, so, you know, he's going to be kicking rocks. He's going to be leaving. This could be the end of his NFL career. I don't know who's really going to pick him up after the definition of mediocre season he had here in Jacksonville. So this could be Moncrief's last go at the NFL. Uh, maybe he can go to the AAF. Don't worry, more AAF videos are on the way. Cheap plug there. But Dante Moncrief, I think, won't be a Jaguar in 2019. I think that writing's on the wall. As far as the people that aren't going to be on the team that are free agents next year, I think the writing is on the wall for him. And uh, that is also true for two offensive linemen in A.J. Can and Patrick Omame. Patrick Omame was a free agent last year and got cut, ended up getting brought back due to injury. And, you know, he's going to get cut again. I don't think that... The Jaguars keep Omame around. I think they're actually trying to just rebuild their offensive line. They do have studs in a lot of positions that are starters, but, you know, a lot of guys are injury prone, and offensive linemen usually get injured more than any other position on the field. So with that being said, the Jaguars are going to have to focus a lot of the draft and a lot of free agency on building key depth uh, at the offensive line. But when they release this other guy, A.J. Can, who has just been – Barely breathing, you know, barely sticking around. You know, AJ Can is the Blake Bortles of the offensive line. He's gotten chance after chance after chance, and he's had chances to prove himself, 
and he just hasn't done that. So AJ can, unfortunately, I think he's going to be ending up leaving the town of Jacksonville, and we're going to end up having to find a new starter at his position. Um, look for maybe, I think uh, the best idea for offensive linemen is free agency, but that also can be attested because like Bryce said, in the uh, podcast last night that the Patriots, I mean, man, they go out, they draft guys, they throw them in, and they always seem to work out. So maybe the draft is the right way to go to fill Can's starting position. But, you know, we got Linder, we got Can, we got Farnell, and we got um, Cam Robinson holding it down. So we got to fill in AJ Can's spot, and we really got to find a better right tackle than Jeremy Parnell. So, and Jeremy Parnell is another guy I wouldn't be surprised if John Gore's cut. Um, heading into the 2019 season. Like, there's going to be a lot of cuts, uh, you know. Not just these free agents that I'm listing or guys that are going to be leaving the team. There's going to be some other exponential cuts to come in 2019. So if you want a video about that, about, you know, like 10 players that the Jaguars might cut in 2019, leave that in the comment section down below. I will get right on to that. But, like I said, AJ Can, Patrick Omame, probably will not be Jacksonville Jaguars for 2019. Now, another guy that I'm really upset that probably won't be on the Jaguars next year due to injury, of course, but uh, he had a great 2017 season. That's Jadon Mickens. Uh, Jadon Mickens was fun to watch in the return game and also against Houston 2017, his three-touchdown performance. That was fun. Not a lot of people can forget that. That's when the Jaguars clinched their first ever playoff appearance since 2007. Jadon Mickens, of course, being a big part of that team in the special teams game, and obviously as a receiver as well, you know, going out there getting three touchdowns in that game uh, just alone. So why is he going to be cut by the Jaguars? Well, because he got injured, which sucks. But if you look at the special teams, D.D. Westbrook is doing everything, man. Like, he's he got the punt return touchdown, and, you know, if you're a guy like Jadon Mickens and Corey Grant and Rashad Green, you hate to see that. Because that is like what your role is defined. You know, you're a special teams guy. That's why the job wars keep you on your roster. But now that D.D. Westbrook, who's a receiver and can do that stuff in the punt game, um, there really isn't much reason to keep guys like Jadon Mickens around. You know, they're not going to keep him to be a practice squad receiver, to be the seventh, eighth, sixth wide receiver. You know, the job wars, I think the wide receiver position is something they're going to try their hardest to just completely make over. Uh, for the next year. So, you know, a guy like Jadon Mickens will not be a part of the Job Wars next year because they don't need him to just be a number six or a number seven wide receiver. And like I said, that sucks because he was fun to watch in 2017, no doubt about that. And now the final guy, the Job Wars, are going to cut the Job Wars Offensive Player of the Year. You know, the guy that I said had the best season out of anybody on the Job Wars offense, TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon is leaving the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2019, and there's nothing you can do about it. And if they, and if you didn't believe that, then, I mean, go back and watch the last game of the season and look at the sidelines. Look at what caused the whole, you know, stir on social media with TJ Yeldon having his helmet off, sitting next to Leonard Fournette on the sidelines. I mean, that put the nail in TJ Yeldon's coffin, basically. Like, there's no way he comes back. That's not a... You're not a Tom Coughlin guy if you pull something like that. But Yeldon has given us some moments, and he has done his part as a Jaguar running back. I think that he's going to end up going somewhere, like how Corey Grant's probably going to do as well. And he's going to impress, and he's going to be a stud for a lot of years to come for a team um, that's not the Jaguars. And honestly, I'm excited to see where he goes, and I'm excited to see if he's going to play a role. Because TJ Yeldon's a great guy and even a better player. And that was five Jaguars the Jaguars will bring back in 2019 and five free agents the Jaguars will not bring back in 2019. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Trade Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trade Pixley, or follow me on Instagram, at Trade Pixley. Also, if you're feeling so, oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trade Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them just straight back. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great.